This is an actual question from the Canadian Amateur Radio Exam. Looks intimidating? Don't worry. It's way easier once you know how the exam works, and today I'm going to break it down. The structure, the scoring, and how to approach it. In the first video, we talked about why you should get licensed. Now, let's talk about the test itself. What you're walking into so you can prepare smarter, not harder. In the last video, we talked a little bit about the structure of the exam. So, the exam is 100 multiple choice questions. Multiple choice, it's not that bad. No written ones, anything like that. A passing mark for your basic certificate is 70%. Get 70%. Your past, you can use VHF, UHF. Now, if you want to get the bonus, you get 80%. 80%. So that's 80 out of 100 questions, right? You get your basic with honors, which allows you HF access. So that's that international using a lower wattage of radio. Usually you can use a 5-watt radio up to 100. Well, I mean even up to 1,000 watts if you're really getting into that. But 100 watts, you know, and in an HF radio will get you around the world regardless of uh, you know, borders kind of thing. And like I said, no Morris code requirements. So that was dropped in the early 2000s. You do not need to learn Morris code for the exam. So I will just briefly mention there is an ex exam for your advanced license as well. So this video, we're just talking about your basic exam, and that's to get VHF, UHF, as well as your HF access. If you would like to come out swinging, you can go for your advanced exam, and that gets you a little bit more privileges, allows you to operate and own a repeater, uh, building some, some further trans, uh, transceiver equipment, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, that is a more, more advanced exam, and uh, we won't be covering quite that uh, material in this video. All right, now we're gonna cover what is on the exam. So topics include regulation and policies. So that's what you're allowed to do, spectrum rules, you know, that kind of thing. We're gonna cover, the, the, the exam will cover operating procedures. So that's gonna go over things like call signs, repeaters, what they are, how they're used, and the phonetic alphabet. Third topic is basic electronics and theory. So this covers, you know, Ohm's law, circuits, frequency. So if you're going to be taking a course or taking the test, make sure you are aware of Ohm's law, those types of things, and your basic electronics. We're going to cover radio propagation on the test. So one of the categories that is covered on the test is radio propagation. So that's how signals travel, sunspots, how they bounce off the ionosphere, um, how different... Uh, frequencies are absorbed differently by the ionosphere or uh, the different layers of the uh, atmosphere. There is also a topic on antennas and feed lines. So this is the different types of antennas, the coax, this is the feed line, um, you know, SWR measurements, um, you know, how, how to look for coax, what coax to use in, in applicable situations, that sort of thing. Also on the test, safety, big thing, safety. This is RF exposure, um, you know, how it affects the human body, how it affects things around you, other electronics, um, and grounding, really, taking care of those uh, antennas and that sort of thing because grounding is very important, uh, not only to get a good, a good signal, um, you know, get good reception, but also uh, in case of safety, you know, if your antenna is hit by lightning, you want to make sure you have the proper equipment, uh, lightning arresters and proper grounding because uh, if you don't, your antenna is as good as toast, your radio is as good as toast, and, uh, you know, you could be in a whole lot of trouble uh, with your house or with your personal safety as well, so. So, how and where to take the exam? So, I can't give the exam. I'm not an accredited examiner. I've only been an amateur for five years, and uh, I'm just learning all this stuff, too, so. Exams are administered by I said accredited examiners, often through local ham radio clubs, and the, there are many options. You can take exams online, remotely through Zoom, that sort of thing. Many people are doing that. I took my entire course online 
in the year 2020 when COVID was hitting. So I took my entire course through Zoom, did the course online through Zoom. This allowed me, you know, to do it at home while my kids were at home and that sort of thing. So um, that still exists. You can do it in person with a club. There's lots of clubs online. I will post a link down below uh, to a list on the Radio Amateurs of Canada page. This will show uh, different clubs that are offering both in-person and remote um, options for getting your amateur license. The cost varies. Sometimes it's free through different clubs if they're trying to get you to become a member. Sometimes $20, $50. I think I've seen it as high as $100. Um, some of them cover, cover different materials, additional um, topics. You know, Some of them just cover what is on the exam just to get you in. Some of them cover a little bit wider range, uh, You know, covering more theories and that sort of stuff. Um, you don't need to wait for a course. You know, if you if you're just eager to get in, you can self study. You can book directly with an examiner. There's lists of ISED accredited examiners on the ISED website. You can get in contact with yourself. Um, and like I said, you can self study. There is apps and things like that available. All right. So study smart, not hard. So like I said, there is a hundred questions on the exam. But what if I told you that every possible question has an answer? that is publicly available, you can actually go on and go on to ISED's website. I've already put a link to ISED below. There's lots of different things on there, including the entire question bank with answers. So familiarize yourself with the categories, know which questions to expect, use the online practice exam. So this, is, this comes from the exact same pool of questions that are on the exam. So the online practice exam is legitimately the same question pool as the actual exam. Can't get much easier than that. Don't stress about memorizing everything. You'll start to recognize patterns. Think of it less like a mystery test and more like an open book playbook. Um, like I said, it is 100 questions, but all the answers are there. Just start reading through them, <laughs> quizzing yourself. It's like, it's like cue cards, right? Right off the bat, you can just download a PDF. So let's talk about some myths with taking the amateur radio exam. So myth number one, it's too hard unless you're an engineer. Wrong. Designed for beginners. It's your basic amateur radio test. So there is some things that you're going to have to wrap your head around. Like I said, all the questions are already out there. The answers are already out there. And with chat GPT this day, in this day and age, if you have trouble understanding something, ask chat GPT. It'll break it down for you so easily. Um, so another myth, like I said, you need to know Morse code. You absolutely do not need to know Morse code. Basic exam with the VHF, UHF privileges, 70%, you do not need to know Morse code. Get 80%, still don't need to know Morse code. You get access to all the HF bands. If you want to learn Morse code, do that on your own time outside of trying to get the test because you absolutely don't need it. Uh, myth. Clubs won't help new, me new people. And the reality is most clubs love new members. Most clubs, you know, have an aging population that realize that new amateurs are needed in the club. So they welcome new clubs in. They hand over old equipment to get these new hams interested, to get them involved right away. And I have been met with open arms at my local clubs. I'm on Vancouver Island. There's many clubs up and down the island that I am a part of even not in the areas where I am because I like some of the activities that the other clubs are doing. So open your eyes to the clubs. There's lists of clubs online. Just search your city and ham radio club, and I'm sure you'll find something or something nearby. Um, and like I said, most clubs, as long as you don't come in there trying to, you know, say this, you know, you shouldn't need an amateur radio license or anything like that because amateurs do take pride in our hobby. They take pride in, you know, having the, the, People that are a part of the community have taken that test and understand the hobby and, and can have more of an understanding. Whatever. Whereas, you know, the people that don't take hobby CBers, a lot of times they don't have that same sort of uh, feeling towards the hobby that ham radio operators do. Ham radio operators really want to know the ins and outs, antennas, you know, how things work, um, you know, and working together as a team, camaraderie, a field day, 
you know, doing doing these types of things. Um, and you can do just, you know, the simple CB rag chew on amateur radio. That happens more often than not. You know, you get chatting with somebody on HF in some other part of the country asking about their weather. Maybe they're going through a storm or something like that. And you're sitting on the beach in a sunny day. So it's it's fun to, to you know, talk to new people. And uh, I have been met with completely open arms with um, with all the amateur radio clubs here on Vancouver Island. So that's the exam in a nutshell. 100 multiple choice questions, no Morris code. The question pool is public, okay? Like I said, it's public, it's out there. All the questions, all the answers, it's not a secret. In the next video, we're gonna dive into the best ways to actually study for this test, uh, different apps, online resources, and how to practice, how to practice effectively. Um, so stay tuned for the next test. If you're not already subscribed, please do. We got lots more videos coming in this eight part series. We're on video two here. And please leave a comment below. If you're taking your amateur radio test, you're nervous about something or want me to cover something, hit the comment uh, section below and uh, let me know what you're looking for. But other than that, check out the links in, in the description below. I did link the amateur radio practice, practice exam. And like I said, it is the exact same question pool that the uh, the actual test is taken from. So don't be shy, go on there, you know, fail the test a few times or print off the exam bank, put it in a binder and start studying it when you're, you know, sitting in bed or instead of scrolling on Instagram, you will pass the test if you just sit down, study the questions and take the test. So stay tuned for the next video. We're going to, like I said, we're going to dive into the best ways to actually study for the test show you some apps, online resources. I have a PDF manual that you can download to read at your own pace um, and how to practice uh, effectively. Okay, we'll talk to you in the next one.